Hey y'all. I finally got something to hold my phone. Hey. <laughs> I know it's been a while. I'm on my way to the doctor's office to do my four week weigh in. I did get on the scale this morning. I was a little discouraged because the pounds were up. And I mean, I stayed within my calories. I even um, worked out yesterday. But I was still up like a pound. Oh, weight loss can be so frustrating. I don't know what's going on. Maybe I'm retaining water. But I will say, welcome to cycle four. <laughs> Today is cycle four. I think it's day 11 or 12. I forgot to check, but I'll make sure it's in the title. Um, so, remember I was telling you that um, my last cycle was really weird. I had the basal temp rise and um, I had the cervical mucus that made it appear as if I was I, I ovulated on like day five or six and so I was saying that it would be more telling once Aunt Flo came so Aunt Flo came around day 20 I think um, and um, so that was about 16 days after day six so that would have been what day 22 so yeah <laughs> it was a weird cycle I don't know my acupuncturist said that um, she thought it was impossible to ovulate um, sorry I got an alarm coming up on the phone um, she thought it was impossible to ovulate that early but apparently I did or at least my body thought I did I don't know I had all the signs of ovulation I had all the fatigue that's associated with the progesterone and whatnot so that was weird and I don't know I don't know what's going on there um oops I turned and I probably should have turned that's okay um but yeah so what do you do you know what do you do so um anyway it's um cycle four and uh it's day 11 12 and I believe that I am um, ovulating because my basal temps are spiking now um, they went up yesterday they went up again even more today so I guess I ovulated um, a couple days ago I got a uh, white cervical mucus um, just yesterday so I was expecting my um, temp to actually go down that didn't happen it actually went up so I guess I ovulated already but we'll see. I think if I get um, one more up temp, then uh, maybe fertility friend will see it as uh, ovulation. So um, I guess that's a little closer to normal because my cycles are usually 32 day cycles. Um, this is putting me closer to, I guess, a 28 day cycle. So um, we'll see. I did have uh, at one point cycles that were as short as 25 days um or 25 days in between each period so i don't know i don't know i guess after those hormones and then me doing this weight loss my hormones are just all over the place i guess so um that's that now um some of you may know that i am in florida <laughs> and we just experienced hurricane irma which uh, me and my nieces and all three cats um, totally escaped um, <laughs> to my homegirl slash manager's house in uh, Little Burn, Georgia, which is um, east, just outside of Atlanta. So we left um, the Saturday morning before Irma, um, you know, came up this way. And traffic was great. It's about a seven hour drive, six six and three quarter hours but I guess you could say seven hours but with three cats one um, that has diabetes so she can't really hold her stuff like a normal cat can um, you know we had to stop a few times and then of course we had to stop once for gas we got there in about nine hours and um, but coming back oh my gosh coming back we we left um, Saturday morning like 8 30 Saturday morning traffic was great all the way up um, and then we came back Tuesday evening and 
It took 17 hours to get back. Like, no kidding. 17 hours? 15 hours. 15 hours to come back. It was, it took 12 hours just to get out of Georgia. That was crazy. Um, so I drove from like 4.30ish to 4am in the morning. And then, um, finally made it out of Georgia and found somewhere to rest. <laughs> so I got about two hours of broken up sleep from 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. Woke up and said, okay, let's just get on the ball. And um, I got home basically 9 a.m. And of course, that was after working until like 3.30 um, that day. And then all that driving all night and then having to come home and clean up a bit. You know, the house was great. Um, no flooding. It seemed like the power didn't really go out. I used a little trick where you, you put a frozen cup of water in the freezer and you put a quarter on top. And um, if you come back and the quarter's at the bottom of the cup, then you have to throw all your food out because that means the power was out so long that all your food defrosted. And so you just have to throw it out. So um, when I left, I, um, I left... I turned all the power off except in the kitchen um, so that the refrigerator would have power so I could tell what the power situation was like at the house. And, um, oh my gosh, come on. My appointment is literally like in 10 minutes. Oh my gosh, like, traffic's just stopping. Anyway, so, um, I, um, when I came back, the quarter was still on top of the cup. So if we, I think, I do believe we lost power, but I don't think we lost power long enough for the food to just spoil, especially since the refrigerator door wasn't opening and closing. So, um, so that was good. Um, we did have power when we came back. Um, it, although it went out a couple times, um, that day, I, I only know of two times specifically that it went out. Um, because I was sleeping <laughs> most of the day. I took a couple meetings um, for work and then I lay down <laughs> because I could not get my eyes open. Um, somebody was nice enough to clear my driveway since there were no cars. I mean, just the prep for the storm itself is crazy. I mean, my car doesn't really fit in the garage. Like, it'll fit in there, but you can't get out of the car comfortably once you get it in so I don't park the car in the garage so the garage basically became a storage space so that Friday um I spent from 3 30 to 1 o'clock in the morning prepping the house for the storm um I was in the backyard digging up the drain so the backyard wouldn't flood and so that the water wouldn't come into the uh, back room of the house and then I was up on the roof cleaning gutters back there to make sure you know the water didn't just like rest on the windows and stuff um, or and some leaves that were on because the roof on that back part of the house is flat so I wanted to clear the roof so that um, the water wouldn't just pool up there with the leaves um, and cause any damage to the roof so I did that and then um, I have a lamppost outside that is loose and even with like some strong wind it's been knocked down before it hasn't been knocked down since but you know with the strong winds coming from Irma I just decided to you know yank that up out of the ground it was pretty simple yanked it up out of the ground and just laid it down so um, you know it, it wouldn't be too much trouble so I did that um, some of my landscape lights got damaged probably from the tree debris falling um, but that's okay. That's, you know, minimal. The shingles on the house were fine. Um, you know, just a lot of small branches that were down. There was a big branch that came down in the backyard um, on top of the fence between me and the, the neighbor. My house is a twin, so um, between me and that neighbor, the fence that goes between our yards, but the branch landed mostly in their yard, but it did damage the fence um, right where it fell. So, um, the guy that owns that house, he's renting it, so I guess he sent some people, they cut the branch up, took it away, and then they put up some pieces of wood to cover up the hole that it left. Um, and that was cool, you know, he didn't knock on the door and ask me, you know, anything for any help or whatever, I guess that was really nice, he's being a nice neighbor, he knows we're all women um, <laughs> at the house, I guess he's being gentlemanly. But yeah, so um, that was the extent um, of the damage. I, I just, uh, you know, I've been working and trying to catch up because, you know, I lost a couple of days working and it's just been hard trying to catch up. Um, I will say that my car seems to be suffering from the long driving. It's just the engine is just not sounding the same. So I'm going to have to um, take it in and get serviced. 
it's roaring uh, loudly. I noticed that on the way back. I guess it's just just too much time on the road. Normally, if I was if I would drive that far, I wouldn't take my car. I would rent because my car is old. I mean, it's a 2003. You know, but um, it basically sits because I work from home, so I don't even have. I like my, my odometer says ninety four thousand four hundred forty four. <laughs> it says that right now. Um, let me see. I don't know if I can show it to you. I think if I turn this around, um, it's going to turn the, the video off. But that's what it says right now. So I mean, I, this car barely gets around, and I don't go anywhere. I live in a bubble under a rock, unfortunately. So. But yeah, so um, that's my Irma story. That's of all the years that I've lived here. Um, it'll be 12 years on Halloween. Um, that's the first uh, hurricane that I've really had to experience. I know Matthew came through here last year, um, but it didn't really. I mean, it kind of threatened the area, but not really. But I wasn't here. I was in New Jersey tending to my niece and my sister. So. Um, but my nieces were here, and she was all freaked out. But I was following the storm. They were fine. She, I think she's just over dramatic. <laughs> so the house was fine. They never even lost power here. So they were good. Um, you know, no tree debris or anything. Nothing compared to Irma. So, but considering that uh, Maria is out there ripping up um, places, you know, my heart and thoughts and prayers go out to everyone affected by Maria. I mean, my gosh, you know, those islands, the Puerto Rico, Turks and Caicos, all those places, um, are still, you know, Antigua, Barbuda, all of them are still, you know, recovering or trying to recover from Irma. And then they get rocked by Maria who came through like a wrecking ball, you know? <laughs> so, um, but she's a little calm now, you know, I was trying to pay attention to see if she would threaten us It still still looks like she's gonna turn out so but I'll keep an eye on her um, And she was back down from a five to a two. So we'll see she's, she's Projected to get a little stronger, but not back up to a five, but we'll see. I mean hurricanes are so unpredictable I mean this Hurricane season has been horrible and I mean you watch the news and every year they say oh this hurricane season is going to be horrible and it, and it ends up being like nothing but um, this hurricane season oh my gosh it's just been horrible and um, listen I'm looking at trees that are just linked over like I haven't I haven't driven over here since I've been back from Atlanta I mean coming back in from Atlanta there are so many like um, ripped up signs ripped up billboards I mean, the winds must have been treacherous here. And I'm just looking at trees, like, in, in the middle of the, in the uh, street, in the median. And they're all just leaning. They're all just leaning one way. Oh, that's crazy. I know a lot of people who um, lost trees. I have friends who lost um, screen enclosures. Fortunately, I don't have a screen enclosure. I probably would have lost mine, too. But, you know, there are houses and a lot of trees around, so they do sort of break the wind. So, I think I just, I just got really lucky, you know. I'm really fortunate and really blessed that, um, you know, the house was in one piece uh, when we got back. But I'm still trying to recover from all that driving. Oh, look at this. Uh, all these businesses, their signs are all totally blown out. That's crazy. My, my um, chiropractor slash ac acupuncture, their sign, where it, it, their business is all blown out as well. So, wow, it's crazy. The winds must have been really crazy. I, I mean, watching the Facebook for all the people I know that stayed here, you know, they were, you know, really concerned and worried about the winds. You know, the winds were kicking up over 100 miles per hour. So, um, I mean, this is Central Florida. You know, Orlando's one of the safest cities, they say, to be in when the hurricanes are, are hitting Florida because few and far between come, come right through um, Central Florida. But... Irma, I mean, when I was in Atlanta, I was still tracking the storm, trying to see where it was, how strong it was, and it was probably 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, and the image of the storm, even though the eye was sort of up on the west coast, the entire peninsula of Florida was completely engulfed by the storm. Like, that's how big the storm was. The entire peninsula, there was not, I mean, there was parts of the panhandle that um, wasn't covered by the storm, but the entire peninsula from South Beach all the way up to Jackson, to the state line really was covered by the bands of the storm. It's crazy. 
absolutely crazy. It did look like it was about by the time that I reached my area or level with where I am that it was about a category one. But I mean, it was still stronger than that prior to even getting there. So, ugh, you know, uh, just people are just picking up their lives now. You know, I think there's still people in South Florida who don't have power. Um, I have a friend who, who lives with her parents in, in South Florida and she's on Facebook just, ugh. I need it. I'm tired of it. Like, I need electricity, you know? So, my gosh, it's a shame. It's a shame. You know, I hope they, you know, can get electricity soon and, um, you know, trying to get back to their new normal, you know? It's tough. It's tough. This has been a really tough year. You know, people have been reading into these storms, into the scriptures. There's that whole um, Luke, what, 21, 25... Um, scripture that you know I think there's some people saying that September 23rd is going to be the end of the world um, and all of that and I guess that's in a few days <laughs> so I guess we'll see I mean no one can predict the end of the world <sighs> um, you know when the rapture or whatever comes you know whatever you want to call it I mean it's going to come I don't, I don't think anybody has an inkling of when it'll come but not to get into any religious speak, I try to stay away from all of that, um, you know, and, and just keep it neutral. But, you know, these these times are just really hard. I mean, between these earthquakes and um, the hurricanes and there's typhoons that are going on in, in, in uh, China, Asia, you know, and, oh, it's really tough. I just, my prayers just go out to everyone affected by any natural disaster, you know, um, what do you do? What do you do? But, you know, you play with the hand you're dealt, you know, and you try to make the best of it. So, anyway, my weight is uh, down. We'll get back to that. Um, oh, shoot, I just totally, no, I didn't miss my turn. Here it is. Um, my weight is back down. Well, not back down, but I weighed in this morning at 256.6. I've been hovering around 256.6 for like the last week or so. I lost a week with Irma. Um, that was to be expected. And I was hoping to really be 255 or something by the time I came to the doctor. But that just didn't work out that way. So, um, you know, it is what it is. So, um, I'm here at the doctor now, and um, I'm going to make the best of it. So, we'll see what he says about my progress. I still have another four weeks. I mean, I lost a week um, the week that I saw him because I traveled um, to Chicago for work. So, I lost that week. I lost this week uh, with Irma because I couldn't really keep up with my schedule or even my food uh, plan. So... You know, it is what it is. I am still down almost 14 pounds. Uh, I weighed, you know, 256.6. I when I started um, on the 25th of August, I was 270.2. So, um, you know, do the math. <laughs> That's where I am today. I'm sure his scale will put me higher, though. Those the doctor scales always do that. But anyway, I'll see you after the doctor. All right, all right, bye bye. Hey y'all. All right. So after the doctor's office on my way back home because I got meetings and stuff to do. I'm going to talk to you while I drive. Alright, so I was right. I weighed 267. The scale was very nice to me in there because it said I weighed 255.8! Whoa, whoa! <laughs> yes! So, that was a 12 pound weight loss for the doc. And um, he came in and he said I totally made his day and that he was so proud of me for losing 12 pounds in the last four weeks. Um, but then he says, oh, we need a couple more months of this. And I'm like, well, what about the November cycle? And he's like, no, no, I wanted to be safe. See, this is, this is what I, f I fear, you know, for the okie doke it's kind of like all right look um yeah i'll give you eight weeks to start in the november cycle but um then you come in you show progress and it's like all right we just need a couple more months like this and it's like really <laughs> so 
I'm kind of annoyed at that, but I am glad that he recognized my hard work. And um, I know I can do better in the next four weeks, provided I don't have to run from a hurricane. And provided that I don't have to travel for work, because those were the two things that jumped into this, this four weeks. Um, and he mentioned some, um, like, injectable medicines that they give for, like, diabetics to help them lose weight or whatever. But he said he's not suggesting it. He's just throwing options out there in the event that I need it. And then now he's backtracking um, off of the bariatric surgery and the medicine because now he's agreeing with me and saying, oh, well, you know, the behaviors and this and that and the other. He said, well, when I was suggesting the bariatric surgery, that was me trying to, you know, get the weight off you fast so that, um, you know, you can get started. But I'm so happy that you lost the 12 pounds. This is really making my day. And um, I'm so proud of you. Let's just keep doing it. And he asked me what I was doing. Um, to lose the weight and I was telling them well, you know, my diet has changed and um, You know when I'm exercising I'm going to totally do another uh, uh, another video um, Explaining what I'm doing with the weight loss probably after um, I go to him again so um, I said so you sure you don't want to squeeze me into your October cycle? He's like no 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 I wanted to be safe. I want you to be at that point before you start treatment and I, you know, I want you to have a healthy pregnancy, no preeclampsia, no gestational diabetes. I mean, we both know I can be perfectly healthy and experience those things, okay? So he's not preventing it, but he's leaning on science and statistics because they all say that um, I really need to get my BMI under 40. Okay, fine. So I said, to be under 40, I just need to be, he said, well, how much do you need to weigh to get under 40? And I said, 235. And he says, oh, well, let me see. He pulled out his calculator and did a little math. <laughs> Sorry, guys, under a bridge. <laughs> and then um, he says, oh, that's actually pretty accurate. He said, you know, 236 is actually where you would need to be. And I said, well, 235 is a nice round number. So we'll do that. So I said, well, what if I hit 235 before November 1st? And he said, well, then we'll start treatment. Because he said he only does egg retrievals every other month. Which means he wouldn't do an egg retrieval until January. But he would prep, start prepping me mid-November. So... That's my hope to be pregnant by the end of this year. That's pretty much out. Um, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. That made me a little sad that I'm not going to be pregnant before the end of the year. But um, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. And I'll see him in four weeks. And um, hopefully I would have dropped, you know, maybe 20 pounds. Um, you know, well, maybe another 15 so I can, you know, be at that, uh, that 35. So what I need, I need 20, I need a little over 20 pounds to be at two, 235. So I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing and, um, not let the fact that he's pushing me out a bit discourage me you know he really is looking out for my health and, and my safety he's not just trying to take my money um, and do what I want to do because I want to do it however way I want to do it so I appreciate him for that um, you know he's been my doctor for a long time and you know he wants it to be successful and I want it to be successful I just know that with my tubes out of the equation I just know I feel it in my spirit <laughs> that I will, you know, become pregnant successfully. So, that's fine. Um, hopefully, my insurance doesn't change. Oh, I forgot to ask. Um, hopefully, my, they're probably going to have to do another pre-off. 
but hopefully my insurance doesn't change between now and then in regards to what they'll pay for so um that's my other concern about doing the egg retrieval next year but at least i can get started on um the treatments this year and it kind of sucks because i'm going to end up paying more money next year because i have one of those copay insurances where you pretty much have to get like to your out of pocket maximum or you have to get to the copay before insurance pays for anything so that means um i'm gonna have to pay out of pocket quite a bit come january so that sucks too <sighs> oh that makes me sad but it sounds like they only do egg, they'll only do egg retrievals in November so maybe maybe if I work really hard and get there by my next visit with him in four weeks which will be October 19th maybe I'll be close enough for him to start and can maybe do an egg retrieval in November so that's what I'm going to push for because I don't know this so uh, this becomes incredibly expensive if it has to go into next year would rather do an egg retrieval this year and uh, a transfer instead of having to pay out of pocket not out of pocket but having to pay my copay um next year <sighs> i'll have to see but i don't know i'm not gonna let it discourage me i'm just gonna keep doing what i'm doing and hopefully um without the interruptions i can really get that weight loss that i was hoping for um with the next visit I was really hoping to be like 20 pounds down for this visit. But I had all those those trips. You know, the hurricane and the business trip. So uh, I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. And um, you know, making the the right moves. But you know, I am officially the lowest that I've weighed in over a year so that is certainly an accomplishment for where I am um 255.8 is the, the weight that I'm going with today since so that was the weight of the doctor that is actually with a little clothes on so um I'm going to go with that I'm actually feeling a little hungry right now I can't eat for another little bit so want to go home and drink some water because I did walk I was so discouraged by the scale and I just went and got on the scale and got on the treadmill for um 20 minutes that's a warm up cool down and a 10 minute fast walk so um I didn't have time to do like a full walk but um yeah so that's it guys um <laughs> this video is still like 30 minutes long um, that's it. That's my update for today. Um, it's my TCC update. That's my weight loss update. That's my Hurricane Irma update. <laughs> I'm, I'm in a great mood. Oh, my blood pressure was great. Um, she was able to take it with the machine and it was regular. Woo -woo. So I'm happy about that too. Um, today's a good day. And now I get to go and do some work. So... I'll get this work day out of the way. It's Thursday, one more day, and then I can like try to relax. I'll probably spend the weekend doing some debris cleanup in the yard since I haven't done any since I've been back. Um, but I'll, I'll finally get some of that done and um, burn some more calories in the process, right? Yes, yes. So I'm excited. Um, and hopefully I can get close enough where maybe he will squeeze me in in November instead of waiting to start me early 
Um, I think if I if I show a good weight on October 19th, that's like two weeks before November. That should be enough. Like if I'm like at 240, right? That's like 15 pounds from now. 15, 16 pounds. If I'm like 240 or less, I think he should get me in there. That's what I think. I think he should get me in there and um, just squeeze me in for November. I'm going to push for that on the next visit depending on what this weight looks like. But yeah, I'm, I'm so proud of myself. Um, and um, I am, you know, so proud of not letting the scale discourage me. Um, and, you know, you look at your body every day and you see gradual changes and that can really play mind tricks on you because the the changes are so gradual that sometimes you think you see something and then you see yourself in the picture and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm huge, you know? Um, but I was looking at myself in the mirror today and I was really saying that I didn't really see a whole lot of change like in my body, but I know I had, you know, lost the weight. So, you know, I'm just, I see change, I notice, you know, little things, but um, I don't see a whole lot of change, but I guess, you know, it's only, you know, 14 pounds, you know, so I think it's noticeable that I would be down um, to other people. They say other people don't notice weight loss until you drop about 15 pounds, so I'm at the point where people would notice that I lost some weight, but you know it's so gradual for me and I'm looking at myself every day and I guess the little changes little changes so maybe I just need to start taking pictures so that I can see before and current you know I'm not calling it after because I'm not at my after yet before and current before and current so that's what we're gonna do and um, I am going to work extra hard to get close to my 235 goal so that um, I can maybe try to still squeeze into the egg retrieval in November instead of it getting pushed to December. <sighs> because that really sucks to have to wait until January. I mean, not December, but January. That, that would really suck. So. I'm home now. <laughs> I'm going to sign off of this. Um, I know I haven't been sharing my story long. And I, and I want to thank all the subscribers that I have. And um, thank everyone who's been um, viewing my videos. And kind of following my journey. Whether you're subscribed or not. But do hit the subscribe button. Um, I'm not really big on social media. Um, <laughs> I'm just not. So, I, you know, I, my life is not very interesting. I work. I stay home, I watch TV, I hang out with the cats, and I'm dieting. Yeah, life's not very interesting, so I'm not real big on the social media thing. Even my personal Facebook, I'm not, I don't really post very much. I'm, I just kind of very much go through my day. But um, I think this journey is just um, so important for um, other women, and I, I spend a lot of my free time watching the journey of a lot of you um, ladies. Um, who are on YouTube. So, um, hopefully, you know, as your journeys inspire me, um, that I inspire someone else who may be starting after me. Um, I am in another single moms by choice group. Um, and I'm, you know, trying to keep up with that. I'm still in, um, my cryobank, uh, friends group. And, um, you know, I just can't wait to get pregnant I just want can't wait to get pregnant that's where I am right now I just want to get pregnant so bad ah, and pushing it out to I mean the harvest to January oh my gosh it seems like so far away and everybody keeps telling me that I'm not old you know <laughs> but I feel old I'm 37 I'll be um 38 <laughs> in less than six months well in about six months I'll be 38 so you know uh, I still have time to have my two kids before 40 right so hopefully I'll get twins with with this and um, you know with my blood pressure being great 
and uh, my weight being down, you know, he'll be able to put two embryos in and hopefully they'll both take and, you know, I'll keep taking my vitamins and going to acupuncture and, you know, doing what I'm supposed to do. <sighs> oh, it just seems so far away though, guys. It just seems so far away. Anyway, let me get in here. Um, they haven't come and picked up the trash yet. I guess I got time to put my trash out. Woo! So let me do that and <laughs> then get back to work because I'm supposed to be back to work by 11. Yeah, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to say toodaloo to you all out there, to all the TTCers. Um, baby dust to all of you. Sprinkle, sprinkle. And to anyone going through a weight loss journey, like I'm going through a weight loss journey, I wish you all the best. Don't let the scale discourage you. Don't let the scale discourage you. If ever you get discouraged by the scale, go and get on the treadmill, go take a walk, lift some weights or whatever, and work out that frustration in a positive way not a negative way not that eating is negative but if eating makes you gain weight then it is negative and it only hurts the purpose so <sighs> i'm sticking to the plan sticking to the plan as miserable as i am with it i'm not incredibly miserable it's just blah 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 <laughs> it's such a long weight loss is such a long journey but i'll i'll We'll make another video and talk about that. But anyway, so all those going through a weight loss journey, good luck to you. All the best to you. <makes noise> to all the TTCers, baby dust, sticky baby dust, sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. And um, I will catch you in the next video. Have a good one. Bye.